This is Snow Zone on Fox Sports Net. Semi-final of telemarking is about to begin. John Dill, Eric Lieberman, and Chad Houck. The start is so critical right here, Craig. The person that gets that whole shot, 90% of the time, they're going to walk away with the win. So this is very important here. And on this course particularly, the top is the most difficult section of this course. Let's see who can get the whole shot here. These guys really have to go for it. Three in the semifinal, but only two will advance. Chad's in a good position on the inside line. But look at Eric. Nice tight turn right there, takes the lead. Chad's in second place. Oh, a great pass right there from John. Now these guys are, looks like they're walking away. They're making Telmark, they're on Telmark skis. However, they're not required to make the Telmark turn, which is putting one foot in front of the other. Chad Howe dropping back a little bit. That's giving some free area to Eric Lieberman and John Dill. We'll see if they can maintain these positions as they head over the bump. Pushing the turns on that top section. Now these guys are taking a little easier. The top two skiers will advance to the next round. So they can, they can take it a little easy, save their legs. They're making a lot of runs throughout the day. Real smooth on this section. Eric, he knows all he needs to do is cross the finish line. He's in the next round. A little glance back. Little look over his shoulder. That's right, Scott. See his position. He sees John Dill back there. Ooh, a little fancy work in the air. He knows he's going through. We just went easy this time because it was only the semi. But the finals is going to be a whole different story. Welcome to another edition of Winter Rage. We've come to the shores of Lake Tahoe and Homewood for the Budweiser Lord of the Board Championship presented by Paul Mitchell. Joining me is Scott Koff, five-time pro mogul champion, and more importantly, Scott, 1998 U.S. Open skier cross champion. How's this course look? This course is extremely challenging. There's going to be some carnage on it today, Craig. It's very steep and fast at the top. It's the steepest course of the year for these guys. 38 degrees at that top. It's going to be fast and furious. What makes Lord of the Boards interesting as an event is it's actually three different disciplines. Tell us about them. Well, the three different disciplines we'll see today are Telmark skiing, snowboarding, and alpine skis. Well, we'll be joined by Carolyn Sapp, as always. Someone will sit in this chair and be knighted Lord of the Boards later. But right now, let's get back to the action. The second heat of the semifinals, Janis Demsar, a former member of the Slovenia national team, going up against John Morrison and Josh Lieberman. This is a great matchup. All of these skiers are very well versed in this <laughs> discipline. My favorite for this event is Janis. He's just been skiing so smooth and very aggressive in the starts, and that's where I think this thing is won and lost. You mentioned earlier aggressiveness. They all go for that whole shot, Scott. Janis took one skate. That was what he needed to get out of the trouble there. These two guys wrap it up. And I think John is going to be able to just coast down through here, a little look back, see where everybody's at. He knows he's got this wrapped up. He has such a nice presence on his skis. I think these years of skiing World Cup and on the Slovenia national team is uh, pretty obvious. He's very smooth. How tough is it, Scott, to make the transition from Alpine to Telemark? I think you just have to, it just requires just being very centered on your skis, on the Telemark skis. You gotta stay right on the balls of your feet. You can't move fore and aft quite as much as you would on your alpine ski. Well, speaking of being centered, Jan has a very quiet upper body. That's what so many people look for in competitive skiing. A great, solid, smooth run. Yanez cruises to victory. Let's go down to Carolyn Sapp with our winner. We have Giannis Demsar here. He's just made the finalist for the men's telemarking. Tell us from top to bottom what you did up there. Man, in this event, the start is really important. As uh, everybody wants a whole shot, because it's really important once you have a 
you get in the track, it's hard to pass. So a lot of the stories, very important part. And then I just gonna try to be smooth halfway down and look back. I saw I had a little advantage, so I'm gonna slow down. Save myself for the final run. Congratulations to Giannis Demsar as well as John Morrison who finished second in that second semifinal. They will advance along with Lieberman and Dill. Well, yesterday, the mountain belonged to the boarders. One of the great things about Lord of the Boards is it encompasses three different disciplines, snowboarding, one of them. And these guys really shredded yesterday, Scott. And it didn't matter if you're on skis, the Telmark, or the snowboard. This course was unrelentless and very challenging. A great day had by all. Our finalists yesterday, Wilhelm in first, Bach in second, and Gunsch in third. Those were our individual discipline winners. However, to take the overall title, you have to be able to ski. We'll be back to the Budweiser Lord of the Boards after this. Frank, I'm thinking about moving to another swamp. No, really? I I'm just not comfortable living in a swamp where assassination attempts are taking place. Oh. Every loon with a vendetta, every snake with a sinus headache frightens me. Hey, gonna... snap out of it, Louis. Everybody knows it was you. Oh, Frank, I had no motive. No. I love Budweiser, and I love the frogs. Oh, uh, yeah, you're good buddies. I oh, forgot. Excuse me, if you would remember last summer, mm -hmm. I invited them to that barbecue. Yeah, well, Louis, you wanted to cook them at that barbecue. But at least I invited them. Oh. You wouldn't have invited them at all. When a hairstylist looks in your face and looks at your type of hair and puts the two together with the right styling tools, they create beauty and a whole bunch of confidence in you. As long as you have confidence, that's all that you need. It's amazing. You're free, you're happy. <laughs> it's all about a great cut, and this gives it its style. Welcome back to Homewood and the Budweiser Lord of the Boards presented by Paul Mitchell. The Budweiser Lord of the Boards is brought to you by Budweiser. Brewery fresh taste, guaranteed. And presented by Paul Mitchell Professional Salon Products. And by W1 by Raymond Wild. Time for the next generation. And by Reno Air. Discover a better low fare airline. A beautiful course here on the western shores of Lake Tahoe at Homewood, and no one knows it better than event director and course designer Chris Ernst. Uncle Lee, what do you got? This is Uncle Lee at the start of the Homewood Lord of the Boards course, and this thing is steep. It rolls away like 38 degrees, kind of GSs back and forth, swoops down into some more GS turns, then gets into some berms, some double jumps, and some whoop de doos Actually, you know what? Let me show you instead of talking about it. Here we go. On course, on course. It's a little bumpy and rutted here. We got some guys slipping it out. Real rough through here. Come across the hill. It's a little more rutted. Real fast right there. More berms, steep ruts, a little air. Landing on the wall, getting thrown back all over the place. Kind of sends you across the hill. Getting deeply rutted. A little air. Boom, a landing. These ruts are getting deeper every run. Stay high on these berms. A little dump shoot. A little quarter hit. Another little air. Gets real tight right here. A couple of little roars. Another air. Another dump shoot ball grab. Then a helicopter salute to my cameraman. What's up? That wasn't so bad, now was it? That's what the Lord of the Boards is all about. Fast, windy, left and right. Enjoy it. Thank you, Uncle Lee. A great course description, Scott. This is our finals. They'll be going after it. John Dill, Janis Demser, John Morrison, and Eric Lieberman. Again, that whole shot is critical right here. Janis has been making some good turns in the first couple gates where, where it's the steepest, most difficult section. You can see their focus well. John Morrison with a great big grin on his face, but behind those goggles, very focused. He knows he's got to get out in front if he has a chance to take this title. And Eric has had some solid runs. This start right here is real important. Waiting for the gun. There they go. Looks as though Janish in that tuck gets out in front again. A great quick start, and he's so balanced on his skis. He 
takes these first skates where it's about 38 degrees and he makes those turns look pretty easy. He's really going for it here, really aggressive skiing. A couple of big cross turns, big GS turns. Oh, and John's down there. That's Dill, gonna cost him. Dill goes down, you're right, Scott, and John Morrison moves into second place. John Dill goes down to the spot. He really should have made that turn. And for John Morrison, that sets him up well for the overall position. Giannis cruising out in front, Scott, as John Morrison tries to do his best to catch up, but I don't think he's going to be able to do it. I don't think so. He's pretty solid on his skis. He knows this course very well. John picked up a break, was able to ski into second place here. I think he's going to be happy with that overall. Fist in the air, Giannis across the line first. It'll be Morrison in second. Giannis gets a great start here, great anticipation, focusing down the fall line, good quiet upper body. Just a great start, and these guys are making these Telmark turns look pretty easy up here. Great balance. Well, Giannis did it. You were solid all the way. How does it feel? Feels good. Another hole shot out of the start, barely, and then just nice and smooth all the way through all the whoop de doos and jumps, and kept looking back, see what's the status, and it was actually a tight for a while. So the guy behind me was kind of pushing me hard and made it to the bottom nice and smooth. I was confident. I'm happy to be over with this. Uh -huh. yeah, Janusz Demser, the Slovenian, showing his prowess, winning the Telemark. Two-thirds of the Lord of the Fours is completed, setting up an Alpine showdown. But again, our final results in the Telemark, Demser, Morrison, Lieberman, and Dill. We'll be back to Homewood on the west side of Lake Tahoe after this. Frank, I'm thinking about moving to another swamp. No, really? I I'm just not comfortable living in a swamp where assassination attempts are taking place. Oh. Every loon with a vendetta, every snake with a sinus headache frightens me. Hey, gonna... snap out of it, Louis. Everybody knows it was you. Oh, Frank, I had no motive. No. I love Budweiser, and I love the frogs. Oh, oh yeah, you're good buddies. I oh, forgot. Excuse me, if you would remember last summer, mm -hmm. I invited them to that barbecue. Yeah, well, Louis, you wanted to cook them at that barbecue. But at least I invited them. Oh. You wouldn't have invited them at all. You know, we work with hairstylists every single day because hairstylists give us our direction. You should see your hairdresser daily. Creative, they're warm, they're happy people. They're very good listeners. This is what you do. You ramble on and on at a hairdresser, right? Got a problem? See your hairstylist. Who you should marry, who you shouldn't. And hairdresser can do anything. <laughs> what a great job the hairstylist has. Their job is to make people look better. I couldn't do it without them. It's all about a great cut, and this gives it its style. W1 by Raymond Weil, the cutting edge in time. Time for the next generation. W1 by Raymond Weil. This mountain still has more exciting skiing left to give us. Welcome back to the Budweiser Lord of the Boards, presented by Paul Mitchell. Craig Hummer along with Scott Kopp, and we're on to the men's semifinals in the alpine skiing discipline. Some great action coming our way, Scott. This semifinal has John Dill, Eric Lieberman, and Andy Hare, names we all recognize. However, one notable person missing, and that's Janusz Demser. He was eliminated in the quarterfinals. However, he still has a shot at that overall. Out, these guys are man, looking down at this tired. course. I know they're yeah. feeling uh, some adrenaline here because these first three turns are very steep and challenging. The start oh so critical because it seems every person that's had the whole shot has come out the victor. Eric just rips out in these first couple of turns. Oh, there's some trouble there. I think they're all caught up. Dill goes down hard. We've seen some crashes in a lot of these runs because these guys, not only is this course so challenging and the ruts are so deep, but I think the main thing here, Craig, is these guys have been so aggressive, wanting that hole shot so badly, willing to make the sacrifice. As we watch our competitors do a little mountain climbing, a new part of Lord of the Boards this year. John Dill on one ski, Scott out in front. I think he's made a mistake. I think he should have gone after his uh, other ski because I don't think he can make it down this course on one. As we saw in the telemarking, the top two competitors advance, so Dill on one ski is going to have his work cut out for him to stay in second. It's just so challenging up there, so steep. And Andy takes the lead right there. He's going to walk away with it. 
However, he's got to stay focused here. There's still quite a few turns down here and some different hits. He's got to keep his focus going and not relax too much. This course, uh, see, it has definitely creeped up on some different skiers. You got to be paying attention to some of these turns. And he seems to be paying attention as he cruises across the line in first place. Andy Hare, you came down really solid. There's been a lot of like pulls and everything going everywhere. Yeah, it's been a pretty wild race. Everybody wants to win this. It's uh, it's a lot of fun. The course is getting a little flat light. You can see the. Uh, the sun's going down a bit, so it's getting a little tough, a little more challenging. That guy had a great effort trying to finish on one ski. That's great. Yeah, it's incredible. Great fun. Scott, let's take another look at the carnage up top. Eric has a great start here. I thought he was away from the trouble, but coming around this berm right here, his tails get caught up, and down he goes, all three of them. Well, the beneficiaries, Andy Heron first and Eric Lieberman in second, they'll advance. Tahoe's not only home to great ski areas, but to the oldest standing casino in America. The Calneva is the oldest standing casino in the United States. It originated in 1926. It was licensed in 1932. It's the only remaining initially licensed casino in the United States. Uh, what I did is recreate it back to its original look and feel. Uh, and put all the timbers back in uh, the way from the very beginning. Uh, this was, for thousands of years, was the Warshaw Indians summer campsite. So I felt it was appropriate uh, in redoing this uh, room to name it the Indian room off after the Warshaw Indian, and we have a Warshaw Indian display. Well, <clears throat> basically where I'm sitting is approximately on the state line between Nevada and California. And the name of Calneva came from the fact that it is in two states. And we operate in Nevada, but I pay tax in two states. So it's uh, quite interesting. And the line runs right through the swimming pool also. So people can swim from one state to another. It's, it's, a, very, it's a big attraction. Facility-wise, uh, we have 210 rooms. Um, we have restaurants, bars, casino. We have a pool casino. One of the things you're going to find at Lake Tahoe, and especially here at the Calneva, is we're very friendly, we're laid back, we want people to enjoy themselves, um, and we do everything we can to make sure the casino here is to have fun. We're not here to beat anybody up, but we want them to have a good time. And by far the best view on the lake. We set out on a point, and every room has a spectacular lake view. Hey Chuck, you're not kidding. That was the view from my room, Scott. Fantastic. Well, this is the second semi-final. John Morrison, Dax Willard, and Eli Lieberman hey, set Mom, to go. Dad. Once again, this start is everything, and I don't think these guys are going to give up anything to get through that first gate. Very important. We've seen in every heat today, the whole shot being out in front often has made the difference. Yeah, and we see no one willing to give up any ground. They want that whole shot. They want that first turn. John gets a nice start, looks pretty clean. Great start, these first few turns, big berms. It's got to focus ahead. Whoa! Lieberman looks like he caught the toe of his right ski. Just hit that berm so hard, had nowhere to go. No matter to Morrison, he's out in front, but Dax Willard making an attempt. These guys are battling it out. Dax, great pass right there. Incredible, gets the inside line. Makes a good, clean pass. That was the most impressive pass I've seen all day. Morrison going for that overall title. We'll have to see if this affects his chances. We hadn't seen too many passes, especially in that section of the course. And he takes a commanding lead. Oh, and he goes down right in a section where I thought he had it. Willard down. He's now on one ski. John Morrison, after being passed, cruises to the victory. Let's take another look at that spill. Dax just gets caught on the inside ski right when he's making that turn across that berm, and that's too bad. John gets a lucky break right over the top of his ski. Dex did a real nice pass up halfway on the course. Uh, he has an incredible racing background. He's a really great racer. He got me on the pass. Fortunately for me, he took a fall near the finish, and I was able to win the heat. Dax, what happened up there? I don't know. I came into that tight section in there on that red gate, and the rut just tossed me a little. And Came across that gate and ski came off. Jumped up and tried to finish, get in there for the next run. 
Well, our next run will be the finals, and our finals are set. Andy Hare, Eric Lieberman, John Morrison, and Dax Willard advancing in the Alpine discipline. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. When a hairstylist looks in your face and looks at your type of hair and puts the two together with the right styling tools, they create beauty and a whole bunch of confidence in you. As long as you have confidence, that's all that you need. It's amazing. You're free, you're happy. <laughs> it's all about a great cut, and this gives it its style. W1 by Raymond Weil. The cutting edge in time. the next generation. W1 by Raymond Weil. Welcome back to the Budweiser Lord of the Boards, presented by Paul Mitchell. Today's event is brought to you by Budweiser, brewery fresh taste, guaranteed. And presented by Paul Mitchell, professional salon products. By W1, by Raymond Weil, time for the next generation. And by Reno Air, discover a better low fare airline. Craig Hummer along with Scott Kopp and Carolyn Sapp, and it all comes down to this, the finals of the men's alpine skiing. This will determine an individual champion as well as decide who will be knighted the lord of the boards. On, Our hey final, man. Morrison, Willard, Hare, and Lieberman. Again, the start is so critical. The top nice three turns is the steepest, most challenging part of this course. Really Who's it going to be in that hole shot? Andy Hare hit the hole earlier in his semifinal. We'll see if he can do it again. All important. Good start from all the skiers. This whole shot is important. Eric gets it. Oh, look at that. Oh, he pays the price. No one is willing to give up anything. Now, who's that in front, Craig? I think uh, Andy Hare is in front, and it looks like John Morrison in second. Walked away pretty unscathed out of all that. Gets a look back at John Morrison, who is trying to reel him back in, but I don't think he's going to be able to do it. He has a substantial lead at this point. We've seen Hare be very aggressive on these lower sections. Good skin here. He keeps looking back. Just make sure John is keeping his distance. A little bit of twister. Uh, hello to the fans. Good skin down here. This, the light is pretty flat down here. It's very challenging. Got to pay attention. Nice skin in this part. Jo John's trying to do whatever he can to catch up, but it's a little too late. Andy Hare, our winner. John Morrison, second. Yeah, right at the uh, right at the top on that steep pitch, just got all loose and everybody was going everywhere and it was it was basically one of those just almost close your eyes because it was just so many people everywhere and skis everywhere and poles, it was incredible. But it was uh, it was a lot of fun. I'm really glad that these guys put this on Lord of the Boards. It's a great event to have. It's a great day. Well, congratulations. Thank you. All right. In the Alpine, Andy Hare, our winner, followed by Morrison and Willard. A great day of skiing for all three of our competitors. Another look at our skiing standings, Hare, Morrison, Willard, and Lieberman. Those were our four finalists. And overall, John Morrison is crowned Lord of the Boards. Janusz Demser in second, hurt by the fact that he only made it to the quarters in the Alpine. There's our Lord of the Board champion, John Morrison, with Excalibur in the air, holding court with Janusz Demser and Trevor Brown. Yeah. 
We saw it all today, alpine and telemark skiing as well as snowboarding. Scott and I'm always amazed at how easy these competitors switch between the disciplines. Yeah, and it's not easy. I think it was endurance definitely played into it. Switching from snowboarding to telemarking to skiing, I think the endurance played a factor here today. Well, this course threw up every challenge it had. It was relentless from top to bottom. It was indeed, and I think the whole race was won or lost right out of the start, that first gate. A lot of guys went down, but I think it was really because these skiers were so aggressive knowing that first turn meant everything. And the guys that came through that, it was survival of the fittest today. Well, congratulations to our overall Lord of the Board, John Morrison. That wraps up the Budweiser Lord of the Boards Championship presented by Paul Mitchell for Scott Koff and Carolyn Sapp. I'm Craig Hummer. We'll see you so long from Lake Tahoe.